as you've been talking about transformation, I think it would be good for us today to engage with um, the, the four areas within our own life where we engage with the presence of God. Mike Parsons does an excellent activation on how to release the fire of God through your gateways. And so today I want to quickly go over the terminology that he used and just explain the pathway uh, that he follows. And then I want us to do that part of the activation to release the fire of God actually in our own gateways. And so it's so important when your gateways are full of the fire of God, they cleanse, they purify, then the fullness that's in heaven can flow through you. And so you want to get all of those restrictions out of the way. So when Mike Parsons talk about releasing the fire of heaven through our gateways, then it really starts in heaven because that's where God is, that's where he throne is, and that's where uh, the river of God flows out of the throne of God and also his fire. So uh, the first one is heaven and then from heaven it flows into what I like to call the glory of God. So now uh, I tried to draw you a picture of a tent. I don't know if it really uh, looks like a tent. Uh, but uh, this glory of God is really the connection point of the glory of God that's in our heart with the glory that is in heaven. And so the next part is then uh, the, the, the glory of God flows into our spirit man. And so remember, we actually as a human looks like the... The tabernacle so we have an outer court we got an inner court then we got the holy places which is really our spirit and then inside the holy place is the holies of holies so the outer court is your body the inner court is your soul uh, the holy place is your spirit and then the holies of holies is the glory of god that's inside of you and now uh, that glory that's in your spirit then needs to flow uh, to your soul so it flows from the holy place uh, to the the inner court and then from the inner court uh, to your outer court okay now let's quickly go over uh, these connections and that's really what what mike is trying to do he's trying to get us to connect to heaven so that um uh, the the life of god can flow from heaven uh, uh into our spirit man which is the glory of god and then uh, uh from the the that place where the glory of god is inside of us uh, the kingdom of god really um was jesus said the kingdom of god is inside of you uh into our spirit and then from our spirit to our soul from our soul uh, into our body and then out of our body into a natural uh, environment so your first step is going to be to connect with heaven okay and so i'm going to draw a little arrow here and i'm going to say salvation salvation is kind of a broad perspective uh, because you need to be born again now you know your spirit man was created in heaven already existed in heaven and when you come into this earth uh, uh, to some extent people disconnect uh, from the dna and from the blueprint that god has called them uh, to walk in and so you need to connect back into that and in that process you actually become born again now when jesus said in matthew chapter 28 uh, verse 19 and 20 he says uh, um, you know i'm giving you all this authority and i want you to make disciples and then when he says how oh, they're going to make disciples he says first they need to be baptized in the father uh, the son and the holy spirit uh, and then finally uh, they need to be taught to observe everything that he has commanded them to do and so uh, that's in uh, matthew chapter 28 uh, 19 and 20 and so really what i'm going to say the way you connect uh, with heaven i'll say salvation is being born again and then i'll i'm just going to write here baptism is three baptisms really uh actually a lot more but um uh, let's write here baptism into the Father, a baptism into the Son, and a baptism into the Holy Spirit. Ian Clayton actually does an excellent teaching on the different baptisms. And I, if you just scroll down uh, on the Unity with Heaven, um, there's a video that I did nine baptisms. And I'm actually going over those nine baptisms that Ian Clayton teaches about. And so I want to encourage you, it's important that you have to go through a baptism into the Father, a baptism into the Son is really His resurrection, into Him, into His Word, uh, um, you know, um, into uh, His His death. Is is all kinds of elements. You know, even when you when you take communion, you become uh, one with Him. You know, the word baptism literally means to become 
emerged into or to become one with or to associate with a person. So when you fill with the Holy Spirit, you associate with the Holy Spirit. If you uh, baptize into Jesus, you associate with Jesus. And we are baptized into the Father, you associate with the Father. And you become one with Him. His love, His nature comes into you. So that's the first step, is you have to connect to heaven. Now, how to get the, the glory that's in heaven into uh, your spirit, man. And the way you have to do it is through Jesus being your first love. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, it says, This I have against you, that you have forsaken your first love. Now repent quickly, uh, so that you can still, you know, so that you don't lose access to that candlestick. The candlestick is the glory of God that's in you. So the way you actually connect to the glory of God that's in you is through Jesus being your first love. So the way we connect to heaven uh, is through salvation and being born again. And then the way we connect uh, to the glory of God that's inside of us is um, first love. So um, let's write here Jesus. Now, Jesus being our first love. That's very, very important. So therefore, I want to encourage you, every time you engage, you go into heaven, uh, you even start to pray. Start by saying, um, Jesus, you are my first love. And then see that glory of God, that light of God flood into your heart so that you can at least get that gateway between uh, the glory of God and your spirit uh, to be connected. Okay, so now that your spirit man is connected to the glory of God and the glory of God is into in your life because of you being born again and you connected to heaven, the next thing is how do your spirit man draw that uh, glory? And so, you know, if you think about how do we receive anything from heaven? Well, you can say things like we do it by faith. We, we ask, we pray. How else can you connect? You can worship the Lord. Um, uh, maybe you can, you can receive a picture or a hope, a vision from the Lord of what He wants you to do. And that's a way how you receive uh, from heaven. So I have a list of eight gateways of your spirit man that needs to be cleansed by the Spirit of God. And these gateways are hope, faith, prayer, Worship, revelation, intuition, reverence, which really is uh, to surrender to the Lord, fear of the Lord, which is obedience. And so the, the process works like this. Uh, the reason why I put hope here first, because that is the picture that the Lord shows you in heaven. So we connect with heaven. So the Lord shows us a picture. And then as we connect with that picture, uh, we start to believe it. Really how it works is you desire that picture. And then as you see the picture and you desire it, uh, the, the way you start to believe in it is uh, you take actions and you take responsibility for the picture. You take ownership. The Lord shows you a picture and you say, yes, Lord, that's a picture. That's the blueprint. That's a plan. That's the mandate. And I'm taking responsibility for it. And now I'm starting to do, uh, to speak words that's in, um, alignment with that uh, that hope that god has given to me and then I, I take firm action okay and so that's the faith then pray so now i start to declare it i start to pray for it you know mostly when jesus uh, prayed he used to make declarations he will hear the father saying and he would declare it uh, then i would worship him and that includes uh, thanksgiving it includes praise and it, inc uh, uh, it includes uh, just uh, seeing him uh, and allowing his glory uh, to fill my life uh, then the revelation so revelation is really to bask to to receive expansion in his presence you know uh, i always thought revelation is to read a lot of bible and then i'm gonna uh, you know stuff is gonna come up to me and that does happen but really revelation is like you take a scripture or you take something that god is saying or showing to you and you enter in and you engage and it's like someone that's sunbathing and they're tanning there in the sun and as they as they in the sun that glory of god just comes over them and then the lord starts to illuminate and they receive revelation then you have intuition and then reverence reverence is really just to surrender to the lord um yeah, uh, james chapter 4 verse 10 uh, you know humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will lift you up and then finally the fear of the lord and the fear of the lord is really then the expression of obedience you can't say that you have the fear of the lord in your life and you're not obedient to him so these guides uh and so a way to do it is to 
uh, we'll do the activation now with um, Mike, but a way to do it is, with, is to take your hope gate and say, Lord, I stand in front of my hope gate of my spirit. And then you start to pray in tongues and you say, Lord, I open it up. And Lord, now uh, bring your glory through that hope gate and show me the image, the picture and the mandate that you have for me. And then the Lord opens it up and then you'll see that the hope gate will start to function. And then you start to stand in front of your faith gate and you start to pray in tongues again. Uh, you can even declare scriptures. Uh, the Lord is quickening in your, your spirit so that your faith gate can start to become operational and cleansed. And then you can open up your prayer gates uh, by uh, declaring what God is saying, uh, speaking to the Lord, um, uh, engaging to the Lord, telling Him how much you love Him. You know, uh, you can even pray the Father's Prayer. That's kind of like an activation that Jesus gave to His disciples. Uh, and then you can open up the worship gate. Uh, fortunately, uh, most um, believers, the worship gate is, is quite open uh, because we spend significant times in our churches uh, worshiping so people understand how what it means to worship uh, not necessarily to enter in uh, but at least they understand set your focus on jesus start to love on him and so really when we worship him we love on him it's interesting when you uh, we worship you have to remember that you actually come to bring your love to him instead of trying to draw from him when you worship then revelation like i said it's basking in his presence uh, then uh, intuition uh, is just to be sensitive to your conscience and to the Holy Spirit inside of you. Uh, then the reverence is to surrender. And you know, if you want to practice your 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 reverence, guy, just go flat on your face uh, and uh, say to the Lord, you humble yourself, you release all the ideas that you have about your own identity, your own opinions about anything, uh, your own ideas, your plans, dreams, all of that. Just lay down completely before Him, let Him burn it in the fire, and say, Lord. Uh, I, I surrender completely in reverence and then he's going to replace all of that of who you are, your identity, all of that with the image that he has for your life. And then finally, the fear of the Lord, which then says, okay, Lord, uh, I need to uh, take firm action steps based on what you have given to me. And so you need to work on these gates. Uh, I I think it will take about 30 days. If you every day pray and work through these gates, you do this activation with Mike regularly, then you can get those gates open so that you can start to flow. Okay, so now once the, the, the glory, you're connected to even, you're connected to the glory of God uh, that's inside of you, the kingdom of God is in you, uh, your spirit gateways are opening, now you can work on your soul gates. Okay, so now let's list the soul gates. So your soul gates are your conscience, reason, imagination, mind. So in your mind you have the unconscious mind, subconscious mind, and your conscious mind. And then your emotions, sorry I didn't write it nicely, choice and will. Now if you think about your conscience, your conscience is that part that filters every part of your life. Uh, you know, when, when you service your, your car, You'll see there's sometimes an oil filter or a petrol filter and it filters all of that fluid that goes through uh, that vehicle. And so in the same way, uh, time is going through your life, all the things that happen and your conscience is like a filter. And your filter, your filter should be clean and soft. Uh, there should be nothing in your gateways. A lot of times with people's conscience, they do things that they were not supposed to do. They don't repent of it. Uh, they don't confess it as sin. And so therefore their conscience becomes hard. So just go to the Lord, uh, confess, ask Him to give you a soft and a clean conscience so that your conscience must bother you. It's very important because your conscience really needs to be uh, the same voice that your spirit and what the Holy Spirit inside of you is saying. Uh, then uh, your reasoning. So your reasoning need to learn to, to say, but I'm going to submit uh, to the spirit. Paul says we walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. And so that's where you, uh, reasoning uh, comes in. Our imagination is the, 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 the picture or the, the screen where we see from our physical realm, where we see from our natural, uh, from our mind, and where we also see from the spirit. And so we uh, uh, Ian Clayton teaches us how to clean our imagination and the image on our imagination with the blood of Jesus and that helps us to be able to see uh, in the spirit. So I want to encourage you to go um, just uh, look as a few uh, videos back you can just see there uh, cleaning your imagination with the blood of Jesus uh, and then um, your your mind so that's that kind of goes along hand in hand with the imagination. We're not supposed to have one image or emotion in our mind that's not cleansed. So if you can think of a thought 
uh, that is ungodly, just bring before the Lord and then apply the blood of Jesus over it. Take responsibility, confess it as sin and then apply the blood of Jesus and it, and it can get cleaned. Uh, then emotions. So your emotions cannot be connected to circumstances. Uh, emotions has to be connected to God and what the Holy Spirit is feeling. And sometimes when I connect my emotions to God, then I actually start to feel what He feels. So our choices in our will, uh, so uh, the will comes first and then out of the will flows the choices. So uh, uh, Jesus said, not my will, uh, uh, but your will be done. So you actually have to lay down your will. And Clayton says, what's important is we don't actually live according to our will. We live according to His will, but our desires. So we, we don't set our will to be with Him. We, set our, we lay our will down. We set our desire to be in Him. And to be focused on him and so uh, key scripture is psalm 37 where it says delight yourself uh, in the lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart john chapter 15 verse 7 uh, that says now if if you abide in him and he abides in you then you'll ask whatever you desire and he'll give it to you so that's that's very important you have to almost switch out of living according to your will rather live according to his will uh, but then live according to your desires that is set upon him so that's that's your your soul and again pray in tongues stand in front of each one of those doors and then do repentance a lot of the soul uh, um, cleansing comes through confession and repentance and the lord the holy spirit is faithful he will help you uh, to clean uh, these uh, soul gates okay so then the final set of gates that we want to be clean, uh, cleansed by the fire of god is our physical gates so the physical gate is your eye nose your ear your mouth and your skin and of course we see through the eye uh, we smell through the no uh, nose um, and really taste also uh, we hear uh, through our ears and then um, we taste with our mouth and we feel with our skin and what really is uh, these uh, five gates uh, that's of your physical body is um, an anchor uh, for your spirit to be able to uh, see and smell and hear uh, and taste and feel when you are in heaven okay now i suggest let's uh let's get into this uh time of meditation and uh, this activation that mike parsons is doing with us and uh, what i want you to do is as you focus on jesus i want you to see the fire of god that comes out of him this is not a fire that burns and destroys this is actually a fire that purifies a fire full of love and of passion uh, but also full of the holiness of god and allow his fire to come into your spirit and then go through each one of the uh, the gateways of your spirit maybe if you if you take a picture of the gateways or you even write them down as you see the fire of god just um you can even pause the video and then just uh, ask the lord to take his fire through each one of those gateways in your life god bless you what i'd encourage you to do um, is just to just to close your eyes and just begin to fix your eyes on Jesus. Just, just relax in his presence. Know that you're a habitation of God in his presence. And just begin to focus on your first love gate. Just focus on opening the door and welcoming in the presence of God within your spirit. Just feel and embrace the fire of his presence, the glory of his presence. Just let that heat of his presence just embrace you. It's the power of his love. It's the strength of his affirmation of you. Let it just embrace you. Let it just surround you. Let it just envelop you. As you feel that heat within you beginning to burn, beginning to increase in intensity. And just feel his thoughts of you.
at dahil i- We have a choice that we can invite him deeper. He can remain in our spirit or we can open the doors of our spirit that we can surrender to his lordship. Do we open the doors to our spirit to allow him to flow through them? To allow his presence and the fire of his presence to flow into our soul flow into our life to bring that fire of his transformation to our soul that he brings the spirit of reverence and the spirit of the fear of the Lord through those gateways to touch our conscience to allow his fire just to purge our conscience from any dead works, from any works of the flesh, for any way in which we have hardened our heart towards him in the past, just allow that presence to come as reverence and the fear of God to touch your conscience. to begin to refine and purify it, to make it fresh and renewed and made whole. So our conscience would be directed by reverence and the fear of God to direct us, to guide us, to protect us as we seek to embrace him and his ways, as we seek to let his spirit joined with our spirit flow through our lives to remove every blockage every hindrance every stumbling block just allow the fire of his presence to set us ablaze to put a fire on the inside of us to cause our soul to be immersed in the fire of his presence let it roll over you flow over you touch your imagination and purify that screen let it touch the reason within your mind and purify your mindsets allow the mindsets to be transformed and changed and renewed as the fire of his presence flows through let it flow through the gate of revelation and bring fresh revelation to our minds. New insight, new revelation, that new thoughts of him would come. Revelation of our relationship. Every disappointment, every hurt, every disillusionment that we face from the past that our thoughts in our mind would just be refined and purified by the fire of his presence embracing us. Allow that fire to flow into your mind, into, the, into your heart, into your subconscious mind, where all the memories are stored. Allow the fire of his presence to just purge those memories Every memory that's a hindrance and an obstacle for transformation, just let them be purged. Let the fire run through the memories, the caverns of our soul that have stored information. Let the fire just burn those things which are a hindrance and a stumbling block. Let the fire of God's presence just flow through our soul. Let the intensity increase. It's the wind of the spirit just causes an increase in fire and intensity. As it touches our emotions, as we surrender our hurts, 
our unmet needs, our unresolved issues to him, as we let the fire stoke up the flames of forgiveness, that we would forgive and release those who have hurt us and let us down and disappointed us, let the fire begin to inflame us and cause us to be passionate and zealous to forgive and release everything within our emotions and where our emotions have caused hardness in our hearts just let the fire begin to burn those things to transform us to purify us and let the fire flow through into our will to that gateway let our will where we've been hard-hearted where we've set our wills against the things of God in the past let those things be burnt with fire transformed let each gateway open and the flow of the spirit of life the glory of God that would flow through our spirit through our soul to begin to transform who we are to bring us into fullness and alignment just allow the fire of God his fiery presence because he loves us he never would want us to remain the same he wants to transform our lives he wants to purify our lives just let the fire of his presence just embrace us and let it come to that gateway of choice as each gateway leads to choice that our choices will be purified with fire that we would choose only his will not our will be done but his will be done as we surrender our choices to the fire of his presence that every choice of negative trading, of every choice for our own selfishness, for every choice for self-gratification, every choice that has built us up and has been for our glory and for our honor, that every choice be consumed with fire. So our choices would be pure. that we will be led by worship as our worship gateway just becomes wider and wider that we would bow in obedience and obedience that we would bow down before our king that we would take his yoke upon us we would learn from him who's gentle and humble in heart that we would truly know who we are our identity as revealed by fire pure stones, pure gold, pure silver. And as we truly worship, as we truly lay down our lives before him, that the gateways of our souls would be open to the flow of the life of God flowing through us flowing through the gateways of our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our smell, our touch, to create an atmosphere of glory around us, to create an atmosphere of the Spirit of God around us. Let there be a flow, let us be joined in one spirit, flowing to create the spiritual atmosphere that will bring transformation, not just to our lives, but through our lives, around us, to our families, to our friends, to our workmates, to those we know in relationship. That the fire of God's presence would ignite us with passion and zeal for the transformation that's to come, for the expansion of his kingdom to the increase of his government, that our lives would be a manifestation of the government of God on earth as it is in heaven. 
just let the fire of your presence fill us, transform us, change us. 